Hey everyone, so today I wanted to show you how I'm going to use pretty much a SharePoint lookup column, but it's not actually a lookup column, it's just a single line text field. So I'm going to write to my second SharePoint list using a patch statement also. The reason I want to use a patch statement is because I want to write to the list just from a single text box. I don't want a full form here. Maybe if I had a slider or some other type of input, I would also do a, a patch statement. But just to keep things simple to write to that SharePoint list, a very short patch statement. So I have two uh, SharePoint lists. This is my original SharePoint list that we've been using in the pre previous videos. It has state, city, zip code, and a couple of number columns. On my second SharePoint list, I have the city with different park names. So this would be just like a lookup column, except for right now these are just single line text fields. In our app, I have a new screen. So I have a new screen uh, called the Screen Parks. And what we're going to do is we're going to populate screen parks based on our selection of a city. So for my icon, to get to the next screen, I'm going to use this color picker, although it's not a color picker. What we're going to do is we're going to write a park in here. And so when someone selects this icon, it's going to select the parent and it's going to navigate to my new screen. And what does it do when it navigates? It's going to fade. Adding that fade uh, on the navigation just makes your app way better. I'm going to make it just a little bit smaller. It's a little bit bigger than my other icons. There we go. And so when they select that, they then get to the gallery of all the parks. And I just have a couple labels here and a text box. So what we want to do is when they select a city, it's going to filter out our cities on the next gallery. So it's going to filter on our SharePoint list that's called City Parks. And what's it going to filter on? It's going to filter on gallery1.selected.city when it's equal to the city in our City Parks gallery. So as you can see, now we just have two options. And when we select Riverside, it populates. Select Asheville it populates. Oakland is going to be blank. Fresno should have some parks in there. So now when we have just a label and I add a park button, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a patch statement. And this patch statement is going to write to our city parks gallery. So I'm going to use another icon, probably the save icon. I'm going to put it right next to my text box and I might make this a little bit smaller. There we go. So with my save icon, what I'm going to have it do is I'm going to have it patch to the city parks data source. And because it's creating new line items, we're going to say defaults to city parks. And so what is it going to patch? Well, we want it to patch actually two fields. So the first field we want it to patch to, and we're going to use our curly brackets, is city. And it's going to be gallery1.selected.city. So this is from our first gallery. It's going to select that city and patch it into our second SharePoint list of city parks. And also, at the same time, we're going to do park name. And it's going to be our text input one dot text value that's going to be patched to our SharePoint list. So you can see here that it's patching to the data source, which is SharePoint. We're going to use a default city parks command because we're going to create new line items and it's patching two fields, the city name, which is from our gallery, and then the park name, which is what we're going to type in. 
So if I were to type in Joiner Park and hit save, it's going to write to Fresno. If we come into Charleston and we hit save, it's going to say Charleston, Charleston Park. If you notice in our SharePoint list, we now have Fresno, Joiner Park, Charleston, Charleston Park. So we're actually using the city from our first gallery. We're forcing it to take the value of a city that's already been defined in our first gallery and we're using it to patch into our second gallery. So pretty much I try and stay away from lookups in SharePoint when I'm using Power Apps, but you can easily do the lookup on the Power Apps side. I guess I'll give you a little bonus tip how I added this little gradient um, bar up here. I just used the CSS and the HTML text. I wrote a, a linear gradient uh, line here which creates that gradient looking function. It's pretty neat. Um, pretty much now that we have the ability to write CSS we can make all kinds of things. Uh, thanks for watching. If you have any questions or any ideas for my next video, please uh, feel free to write them in the comment section. Thank you.